Hello and welcome to another episode of Who Knew in the Moment, the podcast. I'm your host, Phil Friedrich, and today I am honored to have Brad Deal with me. Brad is the uh, founder of Brad Deal Sports Photography, and uh, one of the things that I think you're going to hear in his story today is when you find something that you're passionate about and you're willing to put in the extra effort, people will notice. So Brad, thanks so much for being on today. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. So growing up as a uh, as a young man, you mentioned that, uh, you know, in the small town in uh, in Virginia that you're from when you're about 10, your grandma had gotten you a radio controlled plane. And uh, that was something that you like to operate and navigate with. So talk a little bit about kind of those younger years and just getting introduced to some of these uh, aviation pieces. Yeah, well, uh, like I said, as a as a young man, as a as a child, I guess you would say, it was kind of a kit that you had to build. And I've always been pretty decent with my hands as far as building, uh, coming from my father as a carpenter, and uh, just really enjoyed the hands-on approach to that. And, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a boy, you know, you always loved remote control RC cars and planes and boats and uh, trains, just any of that, that sort of thing I was kind of drawn to. And uh, I guess that's kind of how I went from that to eventually, as time went on, they came out with drones, you know, started with the toy helicopters. And then once drones came out, um, that really uh, sparked my interest. And I was able to see, you know, with the cameras that are on those drones, you're able to actually see what's around you. And and from that point forward, I I went and got my drone pilot license. Um, I was probably one of the first in the state of Virginia to achieve that. And uh, that's kind of how I started in the photography business. Didn't even own a camera. Didn't know anything about a camera. And uh, through that, I uh, started taking pictures and posting them online. And nobody in this area had seen our state or our area from that vantage point. And it was became pretty popular. And I ended up doing some stuff for the state of Virginia and a lot of the different counties around. And uh, I would sell calendars each year of those images. Yeah. And make enough money from that to actually buy a camera. So... Yeah. So I want to highlight this uh, because the way you say it just makes it seem so like casual, you know, it just kind of happened that way. But you were one of the first, I know you said you're one of the first that got the license, but you're also one of the first, or if not the first uh, graduating class to get the drone degree. So talk a little bit about, you know, maybe even some of your familial or people in your circles uh insight on that i i can't imagine they were super pumped for you to go get a degree from a school that had never had a graduating class of that degree before and that what that would mean for the trajectory of your uh your career well the thing of it was i was already doing a lot of the drone photography and it had became very popular and this was prior to the faa coming out with the requirement for licensed drone pilots okay so that had already been become popular. So as far as any support system or anything goes in order to get that license, you know, there was never anyone that hesitated or they just kind of knew that's, that's what you need to do if you're going to continue to do this. And that was just kind of um, the way it was stated. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be in that first class at Mountain Empire Community College and uh, was able to get in and had an excellent teacher and was able to take the the test and, and pass the flying colors. Now, as you're getting involved in, you know, photography, I think there's something to be said about just knowing how to use the equipment, but there's also something to be said about having the eye for something, right? And I'm going to be honest with you, Brad, I'm not a super artistic person, so I don't have the eye for whatever it is. Uh, But you kind of can recognize when someone does have that. It's the way they shoot something or the angle that they do it at or the time of day or whatever it is, the effect that they add. There's just something that makes it that much more unique and different than the way I might take a photo. So talk sure. maybe about that in the early days of starting to use the drone. Was it just trial and error? Did you have a mentor? How did you kind of develop your style, if you will? Well, it was a lot of trial and a <laughs> tremendous amount of error. <laughs> um, but yeah, from that point, you know, you, you kind of you go on YouTube, you you go and you look at these photos on Instagram and different places and you study and you study and you you take in as much information as you can possibly gather. And then you interpret that into your vision. You know, you try not, I try not to copy any particular person or anything, yeah. but um, like 
you just look for inspiration. You look, you know, you try to learn um, dynamic range, you learn rule of thirds, you, you know, you learn how to compose a picture, how to edit a picture. Um, all of those things came into play. And then with, then with a drone at that, you know, you got to learn to, you know, position it in the, in the right spot as well and make sure that uh, you're not hitting anything or anyone. <laughs> yeah. So as you're taking the, you know, drone photos, and once again, I know you had said, hey, as I started to take them, I was really giving people an opportunity to see a part of Virginia or, you know, see Virginia in a different way. Um, what was the inspiration behind getting the calendar started versus uh, just taking the photos and leaving it to you? What, what inspired the entrepreneurial bug of let's make calendars and potentially earn a little revenue from that? Well, actually, there was a lady in a uh, in a comment suggested that I make a calendar and uh, I thought it was a great idea. You know, let's give yeah. it a shot and, and see what happens. And, and I didn't expect to sell any really. And uh, we sold several, several hundred that first year. And uh, from that point forward until a couple of years ago, um, that's what I had done every, every year around Christmas time. Yeah. So you, you're starting to kind of tie these pieces together, right? We were enjoying photography. Uh, we've now made some revenue from it, but you're working a full-time job simultaneously. And I think for a lot of people, the maybe it's not enough uh, time in their day might be the excuse they use. They say, I, right. you know, I love to start a business, but I just don't have time for it. Everyone just know Brad still works a, a full time you know job uh, that's a intensive job. But talk a little bit about those early years and kind of balancing. I'm working a full time job. I'm also doing something that I have a passion for, but it takes up a lot of time. Uh, you know, talk about that balancing act and how you yeah, well, uh, strategically manage that. Well, it's not something I strategically manage. I'm sure I fail all the time. <laughs> but, you know, it's very little watching of TV or, or know what's going on in the world for that matter. Um, you have to be driven, you have to be focused, and you have to know where you where you are, where you want to be, and then how you get there. And mm -hmm. uh, the way those things work is you've got to put in time, you got to put in effort, you got to work, you know, 16, 18 hours a day. You know, you you try the best you can to balance, you know, everyone and everything. Um, but, you know, a lot of times those, you do fall short. There's no question about it. But uh yeah, it's uh, definitely a balancing act that I have yet to master. Well, to that point, and uh, I, I'll be interested to see if this resonates with you. Um, uh, a friend of mine explained life to me this way. They said, Phil, you know, when you're doing life, you know, people talk about balance, right? And having the same amount of time allocated towards things. And that's just not probably realistic for most people to have the same amount of time that they work as they do with their social life, as they do with their physical fitness, whatever it is. But um, she said, you know, the idea is if you're viewed every task you're doing as you're juggling, the balls that are maybe not as important are plastic balls and the balls that are the most important are glass. Right. And if, if you let a plastic ball drop, yeah, it stinks, right? Like it came out of the orbit of what you're juggling, but there's very little cleanup to have happen after the fact. If you let a glass ball drop, after the fact, there's a lot of cleanup to have happen. And so right. she goes, if you view each task in your life as like a plastic ball or a glass ball, uh, that might help you balance out some of those decisions better. What would your thoughts or comments be towards that? No, that sounds exactly right. You know, um, fortunately for me, I've been doing my job, my day job for 20 plus years. And that is second nature. Like that comes really easy to me. Um I don't have to take that home with me or think about it. You know, I just get up and I go and I do that job. And whenever that job is over at the end of the day, you know, that's when I put in that time, that effort to learning and, and perfecting my craft as best as possible. Yeah. So it's very fortunate that uh, I've been doing the job I have for as long as I have. Yeah. And it becomes second nature to you. Absolutely. Now having your, uh, drone business kind of take off and you know having some success with that to your point allows you to buy this camera and at some point uh, a cousin of yours has a daughter that's playing softball and says hey we could use some photos so talk a little bit about uh that because although it's 
probably to someone like myself that's very untrained, it seems like, well, if you're good at taking drone photos, I'm sure you're good with a normal camera. I'm sure they are completely different games. So talk a little bit about, you know, getting started in that craft and then also just the opportunity with your uh, cousin's daughter. Yeah, well, my whole thing was um, when I bought the camera, I was just still using it for landscape photography. Um, I didn't at that time, I didn't want to photograph people because if I screw up a landscape, that mountain's not going to yell back at me. Yeah, so sure. um, I really focused mostly just on the landscape stuff. And then, like you said, you know, with my, my cousin's daughter, I um, went to a game to photograph her. And it's just one of those things where you just you're wanting to go in your, and learn and play and you're not expecting anything. You're just taking pictures of her. And then from, from those images, I was able to, you know, uh, cut her out and put her on like the different backgrounds and things. And so that kind of spread to the entire team. And then it went to the boys team. And then uh, from there, I was contacted by a lady who uh, wanted to know if I could do like a, just a full session, just yeah. a one on session with her son doing some track photos and football photos. I said, yeah, let's, let's, let's give it a try. See what happens. And uh, so we did. And, it became a huge hit. And then I had another gentleman reach out and I said this before that, uh, cause I didn't want to do the traditional photos. I wanted yeah. to do something different. And he's had like the little league baseball team and he yeah. wanted me to do the images and said, he was tired of, you know, just the kids holding a bat. And I said, yes, I said, I agree. I said, that's, I've got some great ideas. Let's give it a shot. Well, I never got the call. The theme just came out. It was the same photos as every single year. Kid holding the bat. And uh, yeah, that kind of uh, got to me. And yeah. uh, right. game on. Let's yeah. go. So uh, there's two things I want to dive into from, from that. One is, and once again, uh, we'll get into this more here in a minute. But one is just having the courage to do something or want to do something different than what it's always been done, right? I think so frequently people say, well, it, it's always worked that way. Why mess with the status quo? Why do it differently? And for you, there was something about maybe the art of it, or maybe it was about a challenge to your skill set, right? Like, hey, it's going to take me mastering this to be able to do it differently. Talk a little bit about just being willing to do it differently, even though that hasn't been the way it's been done before. Well, I think for one, is I didn't grow up in that particular business or that yeah. particular genre, other than my own personal photos or, you know, stuff you saw, you know, that people would post to their kids online. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really have the mindset that that's the way it needed to be. Um, I, I don't think I had any preconceived notion. Um, in my opinion, these kids play ball. Let's get pictures of them playing ball. Yes. Let's do something dynamic, you know, with some lighting. And um, let's try to make these kids look as heroic as possible. Let's, you know, I'm, it's nowhere near the level of an Nike or Under Armour shoot. But if we can give them and high school kids, you know, something that's remotely close to that, where they feel that empowerment and feel that about themselves, then, you know, let's do that. To me, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to see. That's what I think the has really um, elevated my name to uh, and people's expectations of, of what sports photos can be. Yes, I love that. Now, the second part that I'm curious about is having a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, having a little burn, right? Like, hey, you yeah. said you wanted me to do this. And then for whatever reason, you didn't give me the opportunity. You went back to old, old reliable. So, yeah. you know, talk about the, the benefit or the impact of having a little bit of chip, a little bit of fire in the stomach and using some of those, you know, outside motivators to really, you know, dive in and own a craft. Yeah, that's exactly, you hit the nail on the head, motivation. That's exactly yeah. what it is. It doesn't take a lot to motivate me. Tell me I can't do something. Tell me you're not good. You're going to fail. You're going to succeed. You're not going to succeed. Like, I will, I may not, but I'm going to try and mm. I'm going to give you everything I've got. It is what it is, but I may fail, but I'm going to try. Yes. I love that. So as you are getting started in the personal photography, right? Taking photos of people, you've had just 
a lot of just unique visuals, right? We've had the burning, we've had the dust, we've had the dunks, we've had, you know, different football with the water coming down. Talk about just some of the motivation behind those pieces, but also um, just the creativity and willingness to try something. Because I'm sure you've tried a few different things that in your head you thought were going to be really cool. And yes. it's like, I haven't figured out a way to make that as cool <laughs> on the right. camera as what I, in my head it was. So talk yeah. about kind of both sides of it. The, the amazing you know art that comes from some of those experiments and some of them where you're like, yeah, still, still got to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, like you've seen, like even in cartoons and stuff, like a, a picture would throw a ball or something, and you know, throw it so fast, you know, catches fire. Yeah. And I thought maybe that would be an interesting concept for a, a photo. And luckily, you know, that that kind of was and, and went over really well. Um, you know, we've done flower with the LeBron James as he does before a game. Um, we've took a tennis ball and put it in water and spun it, and the water coming off, you know, it gets a really cool effect. Um, most of these things, every once in a while, they'll be thought out, you know, yeah. but the majority of them are kind of just spontaneous or in the moment, or I'll be driving to a shoot and say, Oh, what if we did this? You know, um, I've got a bottle of water here. Let's just pour it on the guy's head and see if we can get, you know, those drops coming down. Um, yeah. Or, you, you know, you take, you take a water hose and in the middle of the day, you can make it the image dark and backlight that so that it looks like it's raining. You know, anything, anything I can do that creates that, wait, what? Yeah. You know, to get that person to stop and think and like, whoa, that's cool. That's, I like that idea. You know, and that don't all work, like you said, but I don't care to try. And at this point, thankfully, these kids trust me enough to like, yeah, they're game for anything. Let's, <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's go make some magic. Let's go see what we can do. I love it. Now, as as the world would have it, right, you know, had you started doing this business, Brad, 30 years ago, who knows if you and I would have had the chance to connect. Right. Uh, but because of the world of social media, uh, a person can make a post and can all of a sudden have a lot of exposure. So in the Instagram and the TikTok space, you've had just an um, you know, tremendous following and tremendous support uh, in that realm. And I think you mentioned the first TikTok video you posted ended up getting like 7 million views or something along right. those lines. So yeah. talk just a little bit about, I mean, there's gotta be moments where you're like, Brad who works in the natural gas world from Virginia shooting high school sports is getting 7 million views from people across the world. Like, what is going on? But talk yeah. a little bit about just yeah. you know that yeah. social media presence and some of the uh, neat things that have come from that. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Um, it's not anything I ever anticipated, never dreamed, never thought would ever happen. You know, I thought you know if I can get three or four thousand people that would follow up, that'd be pretty amazing. Coming from where I come from, yeah, um, could make a little bit extra money. You know, maybe make pay a water bill or electric bill each month. And uh, you know, I had a, a a consultation with Jared Poland from Frono's photo. And at that time I had somewhere between 1500 and 2000 followers. And uh, throughout that meeting, you know, we talked about a lot of different things and how to grow and, and what to do and kind of made the switch from just photos to showing kind of the behind the scenes and how I got those images and uh, things from that point kind of exploded, you know, something right after that, it was something that was picked up by ESPN and yes. Um, I've got one now that's almost 40 million views on my on my feed. And like it's not something I ever thought about, ever anticipated, but people want to learn. They yeah. want to see, they want to know how you did something. Um, and then when they see it, it's like, oh, that's all he did, you know, whether it's taking a bunch of tennis balls and, and putting them on a, a blanket and throwing them so that they all fall around an athlete. You know, they're not placed in, they're not photoshopped or anything like that. I try to do everything in camera. Um, I think that's what really draws people to my page so that they can kind of learn and maybe do that on their own or whatever, you know, the case may be. I love it. Now you just mentioned it and that was one of the photos. Got, I think, have you had, I think you might've had a couple at this point, but for sure one got picked up by ESPN. Yeah, I've had a few. Yeah. So talk about what those shoots were, what you were doing. Uh, and then um, I guess also, when you find out that it's on ESPN, 
just <laughs> what what that feeling is like for you. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty surreal. Um, I was at my daughter's uh, dance competition, and I had made the post, and it was getting a lot of traction. You know, Dick Sporting Goods commented on it. You know, um, different different outlets. Yeah. You know, were, were posting it and this and that, and then and we're sitting there at the table, and I forget it, and uh, I just I picked it up and I said, I just got asked to be shared by the biggest name in sports, and it's like who and I, I said ESPN and they they were all you know kind of were shocked and uh yeah I was overwhelmed never anticipated it and uh yeah it was definitely a surreal feeling and it still is to this day when anytime anything gets picked up by these major uh networks or anything it's not something you ever go in thinking they'll do this but yeah. it's, it's it's a pretty surreal feeling for sure now, what was the first photo uh, shoot yeah. or photo that you had had picked up? Okay, it was actually by a an athlete at Science Hill High School in Johnson City, Tennessee. His name is Cole Torbert, and Cole, I'm forever thankful, for you. I'm thankful for you, buddy. But uh, Cole was he was an amazing athlete, uh, extremely well built, good looking young man, and we did some things that uh, had him jump up and made an amazing pose. Um, so that he was dead center of the field goal post with this with these dark skies behind him. Um, it was kind of raining. Um, was able to back like that, make him look like it was rain. The kid was well built. Um, we we came in some with some close ups for some intimidating looks. And I guess at that time when those came out, um, they just weren't like your average everyday photos. And uh, that's, I think that's the reason ESPN picked it up. Yeah, that's so cool. Now, as you've progressed on or as you've continued on and you just keep getting better and honing your craft, um, not only have you done high school, but I think it was either last year or the year before you got the opportunity to be with Virginia Tech and do some, uh, you know, local local university, but big university, right? Yeah, I mean, Power absolutely. Five Conference. Everyone knows yeah. who that is. Yeah, uh, I went talk to the Final Four last year. <laughs> yeah, so talk a little bit about how that connection came to be and how the opportunity uh, to get to shoot with them came. Yeah, um, Tim Clark, who's, I guess he's with the uh, women's basketball program at Virginia Tech, he reached out to me and said, you know, they would like to do kind of like their media day there. Want to know if I could come up and, and take some pictures and maybe help uh, train some of their photographers and stuff, you know, and kind of do like a collaboration type thing. And uh, we did some photos. We also did videos and all those just went over so well. And the team was so great to work with. And he had such characters and such charisma on that team. And like I said, those, those ladies went to the final four last year. Um, and just an amazing opportunity. And I'm forever forever grateful for Tim and uh, everything he's done for me. Yeah. So uh, as we look at the, you know, progression of the business, um, obviously there are people that make a career out of doing senior photos only, or they make a career out of doing wedding photos only. And obviously, you know, you've predominantly focused in the high school athletics realm uh, but now you're getting major division one opportunities and I'm sure there's other opportunities that have presented themselves or could be in the works, but talk a little bit about, you know, earlier on, you said, I've, I've had a vision for where I could go or where I might want to go. Talk a little bit about, you know, the vision of what could be, or what you'd like to see uh, transcend from this. Yeah. Well, I have been fortunate. Like you said, I did get to do some stuff for Netflix this year, uh, TV series quarterback. Yeah. Got to go out there to the premiere of that. I got to walk the green carpet, and then I also got to take photos on the on the green carpet because it was a football field that they used instead of red carpet. And then recently, just come back from the American Flag Football League, which will be a professional league in Las Vegas, and I photographed out there. Um, that was an amazing opportunity as well. We had a great team out there, and forever grateful for those uh, people that were that helped on that. And you know, like I say, now I, I don't know exactly where it's going to go. It's, it's already far exceeded anything I ever anticipated. But, you know, if I can continue teaching workshops, um, you know, maybe have some sort of program where I can teach others, um, you know, even if you get into more college or professional type things, you know, if you ever get to work for a Nike or an Under Armour, some of that would be, you know, well beyond expectations. Um 
like I said, I don't know. Once I think about it, um, <laughs> David Goggins, for instance, talks about when you get to the top of the mountain, like you never want to get to the top of the mountain. Yep. Once you get to the top, there's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere else to climb. So you want to always continue to climb. So for me, that's I, I always want to one up myself if possible. I always want to see that next challenge or that that next goal and try to get to that. That's that's all I want to do. I love it. Now, with in you, you just mentioned with the Netflix uh, series, you know, shooting some of that. Uh, talk a little bit about how that came to be, um, you know, and maybe it was connections. Maybe it was just a random message. Talk a little bit about how that came to be. Yeah, I was actually just checking my email because I get a little, I get, and I'm sorry to all of those people that I don't get back to, but I get thousands of messages yeah. uh, on Instagram and I, I just literally don't have the time to get back to everyone. But it was an email and it was from Netflix and I sent it to a buddy of mine, uh, Jason Sterling, who's Rocktown Media, who's also my partner. And when we do workshops together, I said, do you think this is legit? And he said, you know, look up the person. So yeah. I looked them up and there was a LinkedIn profile. They worked for Netflix. And I was like, this is crazy. So I replied, yeah, absolutely. You know, whatever we need to do, let's, let's make this happen. Yeah, I just happened to see it in an email. That's no idea amazing. where it came from, but I'm just glad of it. Well, and so something I want to highlight there, and I'd love to get your insight on this, you know, for you in the photography world, for me in the podcasting world, it's like when I remember, you know, rewind the clock to episode one, and my expectation for it was like, I don't know what the heck this is ever going to be, but you know what, I'll see where it goes. It's something that I have a passion for, and we'll, we'll yeah. just jump into it. And today, yeah, it's, you know, podcast ranked in the top one half percent podcast in the world and to your point we get emails pretty frequently or linkedin messages hey would you have this person on the show or would you want to have this person and you just sit there and you think to yourself how the heck did you even find me like why how does this even happen yeah right so on your side though when you think about you know your photography business and where it started versus where it's at now i think one of the things that can be tough for people is do I view it still as this passion project that I still really enjoy and I get a lot of, you know, joy out of, or do I start viewing it more as a business? Right. And sometimes people will say, gosh, you know, you were, you were really good when it was a hobby, but as a business owner, this, <laughs> this right. just isn't your thing. You know, you yeah. can't charge $50 a shoot anymore. You know, Brad, right. your, your time's worth a lot more than that, but people are like, I don't know, am I worth it? Or do I have the ability to do that? So talk a little bit about that transition or maybe you haven't had a transition. It's a passion then, it's a passion now. Maybe there's just more business opportunity there, but I think there's kind of that fine balance on things as it grows over time. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like just like what you said, if you lose that passion and you lose that drive, then the work will suffer. Mm -hmm. um, if you continue to work and grow and improve and focus on that, the other will just, it'll just happen whether you're ready for it or, or, or not. I think, you know, if you worry about the money aspect of it and you're not worried about the work, um, I think your priorities are wrong. I think you need to worry about the work and then the money will be, is what it is. Yes. Now, someone listening to the show right now, Brad, is similar to you. They've got this passion project. They've got this thing they're doing on the side and I'm putting on the side because right. it still might take a lot of time. Right. But they haven't said, I'm going to fully commit to doing this as my full-time job. I'm, you know, I'm going to stick with my full-time job and do this on my nights or on my weekends or, you know, when, when it fits in. And there's someone else that says, Brad, if you would just get rid of your full-time job, I bet you could do the photography full-time and be just fine. Yeah. Talk to me talk to somebody listening and just say what's a word of advice what's your word of encouragement in that capacity follow your heart just yeah. just follow your heart um for me like i love my day job yeah i do i really enjoy it um i love the people that i work with and and they're very supportive of me and they want to know why i'm still there <laughs> but you know this photography business like, it's not going anywhere it's always there for me um, I feel like I have something I can do anytime I want. And I, I love that. But yeah, follow your heart. If your heart tells you, you know, that, hey, this is where I want need to be, then give it a shot. 
you know, um, everyone's going to be a little bit different and in, in what their job is, you know, um, it may be a bigger risk or a less risk. I don't want to give anyone bad advice, yeah. but you no, know, um, take a chance, you know, like, like I didn't, I never ever dreamed of doing, uh, pictures of people. I just wasn't something that I was interested in at all. And then I tried it and then I fell in love with it. And, you know, you go from no, no page whatsoever to 1500 people now to 474,000, whatever it is. And like, it's, I was just follow your heart, follow your passion, just go for it. Just give it a try. It's not going to hurt. I love it. Now, the flip side that I would be curious on is how do you make sure or what guardrails do you maybe put on your passions to make sure it stays a passion and doesn't start to feel like a right. burden or like, right. a, oh, crap, I got to go do this thing. Yes, because I try to limit myself to two or three shoots a week. Max. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, I don't want to sh- at this point, I don't want to shoot every single day because I don't want to get burnt out. Um, I do want to keep trying to come up with new and fresh ideas. And if I feel like I'm shooting every single day that I may run out of those ideas or I'll get burnt out and I don't want to do that. So I try to limit it to the weekends, maybe one day a week. I love it. Now you mentioned your business partner and um, you guys do some engagements together, kind of workshops, teaching, coaching type things. And one item that I found to be true is there's certain people in life that really like to give back. Hey, it took me five years to learn how to do this. If I can help you learn in 10 hours, I would like to do that. So you don't have to struggle like I did. That's exactly what we tell them. (laughs) There's other people that are like, I don't want to use a scarcity mindset, but the mindset that, well, gosh, if I share with Brad, how I got here, then Brad's going to take my clients. And now we're in competition opposed to being able to, you know, coexist or serve in, you know, our same niche areas together. So talk a little bit about that balancing act of, you know, hey, I'm helping someone alleviate five years of learning in in a yeah. weekend workshop versus the person that says, gosh, I don't know if I want to teach them my secrets, because if they know my secret sauce, what's my competitive advantage? Right. Well, like, like I said, I'm not afraid of competition. You know, challenge me all you want. I don't care. But at this point, you know, thankfully, um, my name is out there enough that I'm not not worried. Um, yeah. It's a big country out there. There's 300 million people. I, I can't photograph them all. And uh, if I can help someone else make a living, um, then that's what I want to do. Because um, we're all in it. You know, it's photographers. We're, we're a close-knit community, especially sports photographers. Um, you can see online, a lot of those people are helping other people. Um, you know, they like my stuff. I like their stuff. So, you know, anytime you can scratch my back, I'll be glad to scratch yours. I love it. I love it. Well, Brad, are there any other pivotal moments that you want to make sure we highlight in your story today or anything else that uh, you'd like to just make sure to share with someone listening today? Well, like I said, this for me personally, the big change for me was, was transitioning from photos only to videos and setting those to music and showing um, how I did what I do. Yeah. And I mean, that was the biggest pivot in any one thing that I did. Um, it's just that one move from straight photos to BTS with the image set to music. I don't know why, but it just kind of took off. Well, and I think, I think there's something, um, intriguing about the photo right that that leads me to wonder how the heck did he do that right when i first saw the burning ball i'm like how does that happen or when you see the dark background you're like well surely it wasn't that dark in the real time when he was taking the photo but i once again i'm an ignorant person i don't know how the heck you would do that otherwise so when you start seeing the behind the scenes you're like holy cow like that's amazing that he knows how to do this and put this with that Right. And that's the reason I show, you know, I take the image and then I have someone zoom into my tablet to show the image. Because when I take the picture, it goes straight to my tablet. And I want them to see that like this isn't Photoshop. This is what you see. What you see is what you get. And uh, I try to be as authentic as possible and, and so be able to achieve that look. 
Absolutely. Well, Brad, I want to say thank you for your time and just sharing uh, some of those pivotal moments that have led to where you're at. And uh, all I can say is I'm excited to continue to watch your journey. And you just got promised me in the next, you know, three or four years when you shoot the NBA finals or, you know, (laughs) NCAA final four, whatever it is, uh, we'll, we'll get back on and talk about how that came to be. Philip, I really appreciate you contacting me. And this has been a fun, fun hour for me. I really appreciate it. Well, very good, my man.